680's uh, Richard Southern joins us. Richard, we want to start with this uh, breaking news you mentioned just before the break. A possible cyber attack at Uber, but shockingly is what uh, Uber is being accused of doing to actually keep the news quiet. Sweeping it under the rug, Francis, and all of this has now been confirmed. Uber uh, making uh, this announcement, uh, telling uh, reporters at Bloomberg News that 57 million Uber customers had their personal information stolen in a hack. It happened, though, a year ago, in October of 2016. What was stolen was names, email addresses, and phone numbers. Doesn't appear that any credit card information was taken, no credit card information. The company, though, Uber, paid the hackers $100,000 to delete the data and keep the whole situation quiet. Uber says it believes the information was never used. Uh, declined, though, to release the identities of the hackers. And uh, the company is set to release a statement directly to customers saying that they've seen no evidence of misuse or fraud. But obviously, Francis, this a major blow to the company because everyone that signs up for Uber gives their credit card information. And, uh, you know, Uber looking to go public on Wall Street in the next year or two. This could maybe change that. Now, do we know if this was a, a worldwide breach or it if it just a involved world, it was? A worldwide breach, yes. 57 million people worldwide, though we don't have any specific numbers as regards Canada. We also know that 7 million drivers globally had their mm -hmm. license information stolen as part of this hack. Wow, okay. So this uh, will obviously develop in the coming hours and days. Uh, yeah, we'll have more on it. Let's go to the uh, legendary American restaurant chain. The Cheesecake Factory has opened its first Canadian location in Toronto. Uh, how was it? Did you taste anything there? No, I didn't have a chance to go, unfortunately. <laughs> Our expert cameraman, Tony, though, went and checked out. Look, there were lineups around the block. People waited for hours to get into this massive 10,000-square-foot location at Yorkdale Mall. Bring your reading glasses, Francis. The menu is massive, pages and pages because there is 250 dishes on the menu, and they're all very, very big, think American-style portions. The Marsala chicken we just saw there, one of their marquee items, selling for about $26. But, of course, everyone shows up for the cheesecake. The Cheesecake Factory is definitely known for being over the top. We have uh, generous portions, perfect for sharing, a lot of menu items that are really visual. Choosing my favorite cheesecake is like choosing my favorite child. Uh, but at the moment, it's actually our celebration cheesecake, which is layers of our original cheesecake with vanilla cake that has a funfetti in the middle. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> it's the best cheesecake I've ever had. It's the white chocolate macadamia. It's like two of my favorite things. It's so good. I've already like destroyed the plate. Definitely worth the wait. I got the s'mores cheesecake, and it is better than it even looks. <laughs> well, the, the company tells me, Francis, though, that all the cheesecakes are actually made in their U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. factory and are shipped to Canada. So I don't know if that changes your mind on that at all. Uh, they did employ 300 people at this Yorkdale location, and the company's been around since the early 70s. It's publicly traded. So there's a new big restaurant to go and check out. Big well, portions. Tony didn't bring back any cheesecake. Uh, apparently, they didn't offer. Uh, they only gave him a glass of tap water. Really? So, <laughs> Don't like that. Got to feed the cameraman when they come by. Come on now. So Walmart is installing massive pickup towers in uh, hundreds of its stores. Yeah, this is interesting. Walmart, they're actually doing a lot better when it comes to e-commerce. So in many of these stores, you're going to see these now, these big towers. And uh, what they, they are, they're stocked with all the items that customers have purchased for pickup in store. So you come in, you scan your phone, and then the items automatically shoots down to you. You pick it up, you take it out, you don't have to interact with anyone. So you can literally come in the store, pick up your package in a number of seconds. And think of it as kind of an ATM for your parcel pickup. Uh, in its latest quarter, Walmart grew its online sales by 50%. So maybe there's an innovative way there to sort of uh, get into that whole e-commerce business, which in many ways is dominated by Amazon. Friends. Especially for people who don't like going to Walmart. So. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to. You can avoid all that. Avoid Just everybody. Go right go to the in, machine. Get out. <laughs> Will legal marijuana sales actually move the Canadian economy? So we're going to find out because Stats Canada is actually going to be adding pot to its official GDP stats. <laughs> How about that? It's official economic output statistics that it puts out every month. It's going to include marijuana indeed. Doug Porter is the chief economist of the Bank of Montreal. Doug, what do you think? What type of economic impact will Canada will cannabis have on Canada? 
you know, I think it's it's going to be comparable to some of the other so-called sin areas. Things, uh, you know, it's not, I don't believe it's going to be quite in the same league as uh, as beer or wine or, or cigarettes, but uh, I'm sure it'll go into that basket. Even if it's a small economic impact, uh, it would be a positive one, though, you'd expect. Um, it will bring some spending that had previously been uh, below ground, above ground. And so net-net, it will, uh, yeah, will add a little bit to, uh, you know, to retail sales uh, right off the bat because it, it will be a sector that uh, really didn't exist in, in the official space before. But you never thought you'd be talking about this when you went to economic school, huh? Neither that nor Bitcoin. Uh, Canaccord Genuity, Francis, estimates that uh, cannabis sales in Canada will reach $6 billion by the year 2021. So if you're planning a trip to New York City, you can now do it in Kevin McAllister style. The Plaza is selling a Home Alone 2 package. Yeah, it's to mark the 25th anniversary of uh, the release of that movie. And uh, the package, which uh, starts at $900, US dollars, basically turns you into Kevin McAllister. He, of course, played by Macaulay Culkin in the movie. He checks into the hotel alone, sans parents. Uh, You'll dine in the hotel's restaurant, Francis, on a 90s-inspired menu, which uh, includes upscale versions of SpaghettiOs, Hot Pockets, uh, Charcuterie Lunchables, <laughs> Funyun Rings, Sunny D, and Zima-inspired oh cocktails. There's also an over-the-top ice cream sundae, such as he eats in the movie. So there you go. For your next trip to the Big Apple, you can be Kevin McAllister. See, I misunderstood. I thought you get to leave the kids home and then go to the plaza. <laughs> that's, that, what, that's what you're after. Works? No, that's what Not I want. Not going to happen. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Here's Amanda.